Welcome to the We're Libertarians Daily Podcast. I am Hody Johns, your host, and I am joined by a member who you might not have heard of before, but he is our most famous member outside of the circle <laughs> here at We're Libertarians at the moment. Ryan Lindsay, editor of Wall Reader. Ryan, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. How are you? Doing great, man. Doing great. Uh, excited to talk to you today. Boy, we have a lot to yeah. cover. Um, <laughs> let's save let's save your fame for the end. Let's just talk about Wall Reader for a second. So um, tell me about tell me about, I guess, your journey into editing in general. Yeah, well, this is the first time I've uh, ever done anything quite like this. Um, but uh, my job i'm a tech writer so i write like instruction manuals and stuff mm -hmm. like that so i write all day every day it's just what i do um and i've always liked writing just recreationally also um and uh and I, i'm a huge fan of magazines it's like podcasts and magazines are how i get all my media consumption in so uh and so uh i think it was in january um chris was talking about how he wanted to kind of expand the we are libertarians label to anybody who I uh, had an idea, a way to contribute. Um, so that just got me thinking, like, I like magazines and I like We Are Libertarians. So what if I tried to combine the two? Uh, so I messaged Chris and was like, hey, like, what do you think about this? He's like, I love it. Like, that's a cool idea. And so I'm like, okay, awesome. Um, and so I kind of fiddled around with it. And uh, it took it a took me a while to get started because I'm not the best at, like, recruiting people to <laughs> sure. help out with things and all. But uh but yeah, and you, I mean, you helped out a lot with that. Once you heard about it, you were promoting it like crazy. I uh, am a better writer than I am a speaker, and that I know it's I know it's saying a lot because I'm a great speaker. No, I mean, and I am aware of my background in speech and debate and and all that. But it's honestly, it is so much. I can say things more fluidly, even now I'm kind of stuttering. Whereas I'm like, oh, I just know I can get that perfect word in just a second here. If I just get a second. And when you're speaking, right. you don't get that just a second. Now, people, yeah. sometimes people like that, like off the cuff sound. Uh, some of our better episodes are when, you know, one of our hosts has had too much to drink and then we get a lot of reviews <laughs> that way. But I just think uh, editing's maybe a little bit more polished or the written word is a little bit more polished. And you can just choose that perfect word and say exactly what you wanted to say yeah i definitely uh agree with that sentiment <laughs> yeah cool um so let's uh let's talk about how how it's come along what was the first issue about and why did you want to discuss that yeah so the first issue uh it was just kind of a general um introduction to how people uh felt about liberty how they uh became a libertarian just their political philosophical journeys um etc uh that was the bulk of it and then of course there was some just smaller stuff just like a book review and movie review stuff like that um but this was a very introductory issue in nature um and so uh i i found some people and you you found some people and sent them to me and uh i think there was seven of us six or seven of us just kind of wrote like um you know, here's what I believe now and here's why I believe it. And so, you know, some people went like, here's what I used to believe. Um, here's how my ideas changed. Uh, so that's in general what the first issue is about. Um, and mo most of those were pretty uh, mainstream libertarian journeys. Um, you know, lots of, oh, I heard Ron Paul and then became a libertarian through that. Um, but there was, uh, there was one in particular that kind of um, – went away from the mainstream uh kenton's article about uh how his journey to becoming a libertarian socialist um and that's definitely the one that's got the most attention although i've heard lots of good stuff about several of the others also it was great to get all that positive feedback you know i've i've heard from people that read read the article on mine said yeah i kind of had the same experience you know i kind i kind of came to it through the tea party uh we had somebody talk about dale's uh he talked about uh, his religious journey to it. Uh, and, and I just think there's a lot of different ways that people come to it. Now, the journal is very legit. Uh, you're a humble guy, and I'm sure you're not going to brag, and I know you said it's your first time, but if you're listening in right now and you're like, should I check this out? This is a very legitimate journal magazine. It is... It is like... the. It's got pictures, there's space. It, it's one of those easy reads, 
And I, I kept looking and I was like, is somebody sponsoring this or something? What, what's going on here? Like, how, how does it look this good? I almost like expected to flip it and see like sponsored by Xanax. And I was like, oh, okay, that, that's, there we go. Somebody's got a st- dog in this fight. This can't just all be Ryan, right? But uh, you had a really good, really good vision for it. I can tell uh, right off the bat. And, uh, and so that was cool. Now it's quarterly. Yes. Yeah. So that means that's the plan. <laughs> all right. So once every three months or so, uh, do you know what the next one's going to be about? I do not. I've uh, I've kind of been brainstorming the past few days because um, I and I, I mentioned this in kind of my uh, editor's note, I guess, for yeah. the first issue um, that in future issues, I want them all or like the bulk of the content to kind of revolve somewhat around a central idea. Mm-hmm. Um uh, so I've been kind of tossing around some ideas for what that um, what that idea could be, and I, I set up a, a Facebook group for all the people who had contributed to issue one. Um, and so I'm going to try to get in there in the next couple of days and uh, toss out that, get some feelers in, and um, see what uh, the rest of you all think about some of those ideas I'm thinking of. Um, but uh, yeah, and I mean the obvious one was like. The first one I thought of was, oh, the the election coming up. It's like everybody, like nobody wants to hear any more about that election right now. Like it's <laughs> everywhere. So I, I think I tossed that one out already. But uh, so yeah, we'll see. I wanted it to kind of be a democratic process with the contributors and also. Sure. I mean, when you I just, I, and that's tough too when you have you know seven or eight contributors and possibly more. Uh, I yeah. haven't even told you this. I got an email already from someone who would like to contribute regularly and be, and be part oh, awesome. of it. And, uh, so, and even offered to, to help with the editing part, uh, oh, if, if you needed it. Yeah. He, he was, he was a huge fan and I, I, yeah. I had completely forgot until just now. So I got to forward that to you. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, friend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good pal uh, when it when it's convenient, but I will get that I'll get that to you. The yeah. the but but the response has been great. I think uh, Dale ta- calls it the Crisis of Infinite podcast. There's a lot of podcasts. There's really not a lot of journaling going on. Um, yeah, shame. It, it is. I mean, I it, it, it's funny because it used to be a big deal to be like, oh yeah, I'm a published author. You know, I'm a published journalist. And now it's like, man, if you write at all, you can be published. Pe- people like there, there is there is very little uh, little salesmanship for it, and you really have to produce something amazing. You can't just go in and be like, I'll get better eventually. You kind of have to start at the top. And I, I, and it's no offense to you, I had very low expectations for the journal because I just said. <laughs> you know, it's a journal and, and it's hard to compete. You know, there's very few and there's few for a reason uh, because people are just listening more than they are reading now. And and we've gotten some interest in the book club. And so I was like, okay, well maybe people are going to read a little bit more. And then the response from this, where you have even people that hate us reading it because <laughs> they need, they need to see what we're up to our, our, yeah. our rascally ways. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a great medium and I'm glad that it's taking off. I'm really glad, uh, for your detractors. Now, if you're tuning into this and you're interested, we had a significant detractor, um, Patrick Smith, who runs uh, D- Disenthrall. I've been on his show. I actually debated, uh, Larkin Rose on voting on his show. Uh, and that was a that was a great debate. We actually hosted it here on Weird Li- or didn't host. We relinked that here on the Weird Libertarians Network, so you can hear that. Uh, great tech guy, very polished show. But he decided to make the whole journal about one picture. Not just the journal, like the entire We Are Libertarians network. The network. Like all, yeah. What, seven years of it right. <laughs> over one article. Yeah, Chris was like, oh man, over 500 shows, over 3 million subscri- you know, subscriptions, yeah. 10 million downloads, and, and you've decided to boil this, this down to one image. So what was that image, Mr. Controversy? Right, so... <laughs> So uh, the so it's Kenton's article about how he uh, became a libertarian socialist, and so in the magazine, like the, it starts off with a big two page spread, and the background is a uh, a uh, red and black anarcho communist flag with like two hands joining each other in the middle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it's like mutualism uh, symbolism there. So that was on the website. It's uh, that image on the very top, and it's a pretty big image. So whenever you first click on the article like that's what you see mm-hmm. and you have to actually 
like put some effort into scrolling down half an inch to see that it's not just that. But <laughs> well, you and your job as a journalist is to generate that interest, right? It's yeah. a, to say yes, you click on it and you see a big picture that makes people go ah like <laughs> in either a good or a bad way you know yeah. and to draw you in to draw in people that wouldn't ordinarily be interested and to get people who are already interested really excited to keep reading and that's yeah. part of your job that's <laughs> it's part of what you do is to make it shocking you know i mean i mean yes we all know the clickbait headlines which are gross, right. right? You just say, oh, I, you know, they're like, check, get a load of this genocide. And all you're doing is being like, oh, so wait, it's just one politician who said, uh, I don't like eating at restaurants with blacks. blacks. That's bad, but that's not exactly a call for genocide. Uh, I, got, I got click baited. <laughs> right. Yours is just a picture and it's an accurate picture. Um, there's yeah. a lot of history behind the image itself. Uh, you, you've had to explain, <laughs> explain that <laughs> to death. Um, if you look up libertarian socialism on Wikipedia, it's the picture. You can look up mutualism. Yeah. I think mutualism does the black and orange flag. Maybe? Yeah, black and orange. Black and orange, but it, but you know, the, but they'll they'll respect the black and red too. The anarcho communists, of course, were the most famous to embrace the black and red. You had them in the uh, and, and of course the Les Misérables, right? The red, yeah. red, the blood <laughs> of Angerman, black, and so you got the uh, the red and blacks there that made it famous there. Uh, the idea, of course, is that this must just be the same as communism. Libertarian right. and comms or libertarian socialism must be the same as communism. That's yeah. not how Kenton sees it, who actually wrote the article. That's right. not how you see it. That's not how I see it. And that's not how history sees it. So would you like right, to talk yeah. about that controversy a little bit? Sure. Uh, and, and first thing, just to clarify, I'm not a libertarian socialist or an ANCOM. Um, I, uh, I definitely uh, sympathize with the ideas, but I, I don't think I would call myself that. Um, so, yeah, so the controversy was uh, this guy from Disenthrall saw that and uh, he just, you know, posted it. It was like, look what, like, we are libertarians. It's like they're just a like a platform for communists. And uh, so we had to uh, lots of us had to clarify like no like communism uh and anarcho-communism are very different ideologies and in my mind the main difference is uh like state communism they're okay with using force and initiating force anarcho-communism isn't like if you actually read through kenton's article at not one single point in there does he ever advocate for um even using force really but especially not like initiating force or uh you know, actually like hurting people or anything like that. Um, so for me, that's, that's the big difference. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna publish something from like a tanky or anything where they're like, Oh, we need to, you know, go in with machetes and guillotines and take out all the landlords. Like, I'm not going to publish that. Like that's not libertarian in my mind. But if you're, all you're saying is like, I think it would be really great if we got rid of the state and then organize society around like worker commune communes and egalitarian principles there's nothing unlibertarian about that. Maybe it's utopian. Like, sure. I, like, I'll give you that. But it's not, like, statist or authoritarian in any way, I don't think. No. Jack Deason and I had a two-hour debate. He's a mutualist, which is just a type of socialist. Uh, he calls himself a socialist as well, so I have no problem saying that, saying what it is. Yeah. But, but the... You know, and I disagree with him. I mean, I had a two-hour debate with the guy. It, it, we had it. I, it's from, it's on the Enemy of the State Dank podcast. It was a great show. I linked it over here. You can hear it on the We Are Libertarians Network. Um, it was a great show. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I don't want the state. We're, we're both, you know, we're both, we're both like anarchists, right? We're both right. like no state people. The yeah. difference is, is he thinks that we should organize one way. I see us organizing a different way. And but it's voluntary, so if you're volunteering for it, it's really not that dangerous and scary. Now the call is is to just say you know I, I it's an unfortunate situation because I think the socialism is so muddied. I talked about when Mike yep. Shipley came on the show. I talked with him about abandoning the phrase entirely. Mike actually had supported that point of view and said, "Yeah, let's call it something else." Uh, but he was outvoted. 
And even so, he said, well, these are, that's still what I think. We're just calling it something different. So fine. Right. You want to call it socialism, we'll call it socialism. Yeah. Um, Marx got his idea from the founder of mutualism. Uh, JD, uh, he, in fact, his book, The Philosophy of Poverty, was va- based on the book, Vol- Philosophy of Misery, uh, Prud- Prudhomme's book about uh, the problems with capitalism that he saw and why we needed that. But he also, but mutualists, uh, he, he is very adamant about saying the state is an unfit vehicle to organize any bit of socialism. And all Marx did was say, I disagree with that part. I like all the rest <laughs> of your ideas. Let's just make it mandatory. Uh, right. <laughs> and, the, and, and look, George Orwell, who has the most famous book ever about the problems with, with socialism, was a socialist. Yeah. Look that up. You know, it, it, night, the author of 1984 talks about the horrors of socialism, and he fought next to them in the wars and saw what they were going through and was totally freaked out by it, was himself a socialist. The problem was, is the state mandating the socialism, right? Right, yeah. Okay. Now, now <laughs> tell me a little about, uh, about why you, uh, I guess, what was your thought process when you decided to put it in there? I'm sure you knew it was, it was going to shake things up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I, I know Kenton, like in real life, um, we've been friends for several years now. And so I knew he was a uh, libertarian socialist um, and I was getting this put together. And uh, so I had I had several people um, submitting stuff at this point. And you, one thing I was noticing, not there's nothing wrong with it, but everybody so far was pretty much they were coming from the right to uh, the libertarian philosophy, which mm-hmm. that probably is the majority of libertarians. Um, I'd see that point. Uh, but, you know, I just kind of wanted to, uh, have some diversity in the magazine, I guess. Um, like I wanted, like if somebody from, uh, the left just ever happened to see it for some reason, I want them to see like, Hey, there's room for you in this movement too. Like you don't have to have come from, you know, Ron Paul or, or even like Gary Johnson, like, uh, you could be an ardent, you could have like ardent Bernie Sanders supporter or Elizabeth Warren or Tulsi Gabbard, um, yeah. you know, and just see like uh, libertarianism isn't necessarily against the outcomes you want. It's it's more a problem with the means that you're advocating, but the ends, a lot of the times I think uh, they, uh, they're the same for uh, people on the left and libertarians. It's just, we want different means. Um, and that's something in one of the articles I wrote, uh, I, I don't think most progressives, um, they don't have – like their motives aren't like, oh, I want the state to be as big as possible. Uh, they just want people to be taken care of. Like that's – they have pure motives. They're coming at it with good intentions that we just disagree on the means, and I don't think that's uh, really a good reason to view them as just absolute enemies. Oh, absolutely not. And I and I applaud you. I think, I think your value of diversity is so important. The idea that – uh, I, I bring this up often uh, when I was going through speech and debate. They, sh- uh, I, I had a bit of a cocky attitude, and my instructor showed me once this uh, to help kind of give me some humility and compassion and empathy because that relates to the judges when you're able to understand where the other side is coming from as opposed to just humiliate them. And showed me of the top 10 smartest people who ever took the IQ test. They're all different religions. They're all different political philosophies. They have all, a whole bunch of different ideas. And yeah. said, it's not like you're not going to brain your way into one point of view. In fact, the smarter you get, the more individual you get. And that's what really st- that that really got me interested. I, I didn't know at the time that there was libertarianism around. I was so busy debating left and right, you know, and, right. and, and up until the point where I even graduated from college, like I hadn't even considered a, a liberty position. Uh, but it was just so I think it was so. It, it was so strong with me and it stayed with me today to say that uh, Larry Sharp has a good example where he says, you know, to make conversations positive, don't say you're against universal health care. Just say you're against mandating universal health care. Yeah. I think you'd honestly be surprised how many Democrats and leftists are like, oh, yeah, if you want to opt out, I think I support your right to opt out. Yeah, maybe there are some that won't. But, yeah, I think there's a lot that are like, oh, sure. You know, and in which case it's like, well, then we're not really enemies. You just want a system where everybody can buy into and be covered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's something and I'm not going to exclude myself from this, but I think a lot of libertarians in general just uh, have a problem with talking with issues like that. They just instantly take it to stop using the state to oppress me. Like if a leftist says I want universal health care, like I think the response would be. 
me too. Like if everybody had awesome healthcare, that'd be amazing. Like, I just don't want to use violence to achieve that goal. Or, you know, even like, uh, let's talk about guns. Like if a leftist says America has a gun problem, don't just be like, don't take my guns. Be like, well, you know, maybe like we should talk about, not like, should we take guns from people? But why do people feel like, you know, they need a hundred or like 200 guns in their homes or, you know, why is there so much violence? Not saying we need to use the state to solve these problems, but just sure. like ask the questions. Um, I, I and mean, like, that's something I want wall reader to do is just not just look at this and be like, this is the libertarian stance on this, but actually ask these questions. And like, how can we address these questions without using the state or using violence in general? Sure. I mean, the, the, pro-gun movement used to be something that the left embraced and the right was cracking down on 20 years ago. Yeah. And the, you know, and now, and then I guess now we've come full circle and the right's back to cracking down on it again. Oh, well, you know, that's like identity <laughs> politics at its finest. Right. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is, you know, and so it's, it's following identity as opposed to policies. And I think that a lot of our communities are not used to having those conversations and we, we vote for a politician who supports our package of ideas and it kind of takes away from the discourse. But I, I mean, I applaud you. I think for me, I'm more proud to be published with a group of diversity. It's something that Chris noted was in our platform that we give a yeah. voice to a lot of people. <laughs> we treat you like adults. So you're going to hear some opinions you disagree with, you know? Right. And what happens when you do? Well, look, I... I did a whole debate against socialism. I'm not a big fan, even at a voluntary <laughs> basis, right? But here's the thing is that's my choice. And if my idea is really so good, I don't have to censor Kenton. I can have yeah. my article published literally right next to his and have people say, I kind of like his ideas better. You know, we always talk about the way to solve a lot of gun violence is to get rid of these ignorant gun laws that yeah. crack down, you know, these safe zones, these gun free zones where people always end up getting murdered in masses and say, you know, well, the, the, if we have a problem with guns, the answer is more guns. If we have a problem with something on, uh, you know, something, you know, we just tolerate more of it and the winning ideas will come to the surface. The same right, goes for exactly. free speech. The best way to fight speech that you disagree with is with more speech that you do agree with. And so I'm just, I am so pleased as punched and proud of the, the journal that it has decided to place as a value that diversity of thought because it really is just an echo chamber otherwise. And honestly, yeah. the person, the person and persons who were pissed off by it, they're echo chambers, you know, right. they, they're upset. Well, that was one of the things that was uh, most confusing to me was um, one of the, the Mises caucus people was talking and it's like, well, like if you want to write something or like somebody else, you know, wants to write something to like rebuke this for mm -hmm. issue two, go for it. And the, the consensus among them was just like, why would I want to be published like in a platform that gives voice to communists? It's like, <laughs> that doesn't make any like that. I don't know. That mindset doesn't make sense to me. Right, but. as though, oh, Hitler's talk, <laughs> it, like, if you think it's hit, literally Hitler talking, and someone gives you an offer to go on a debate stage with him, wouldn't you take it? I mean, yeah. isn't that the best way to defeat That's... Hitler, as opposed to what Hitler did, which is silence everybody else except for me? You say, <laughs> oh, well, all of a sudden I have an equal platform and an equal voice? Oh, uh, yeah. The fact that Chris took somebody who, who was... Again, this is a 70-plus page journal. There is so many great images... There is great literature. It's more than just reading. I mean, it's it's a visual it's a visual masterpiece, and you'll love it if you see it. But the fact that he he it boiled it all down to that one image for him, and he's just like, this is the like you said, not just the journal. This is the whole magazine. This is the whole network. This is the, yeah. What I, I <laughs> whenever I saw that all happening, I messaged Chris because I thought he was going to be like, like Ryan, you have to shut this down. And I was <laughs> like, oh man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> No, he was very gracious about it. <laughs> so, uh, he was very gracious and really took the charge by being saying like, yeah. hey, Patrick, you want to get published in the next next one? Go write something up. Talk about yeah. how you hate it. We <laughs> will publish you. Like this is a non-censorship zone. I have talked to ANCAPs. For the network, we have libertarian socialists. We have anarchists. We have minarchists. We have uh, right libertarians. We have left libertarians. Like we have it, we have a whole bunch of people. We have registered Republicans and Democrats, for goodness sake. And so yeah. it's just like, look, this is clearly our our show is absolutely not for the close minded. 
You will oh, burn if this is for the closed mind. If you just want to just do nothing but listen to your re- libertarian beliefs reaffirmed, this is a very bad, bad, dark place for you. Right. And, <laughs> and it, it feels like just like a beacon of sunlight on a vampire almost to the people that see it, to see that they're like, you're willing to even talk to him? <laughs> you know? Well, it's funny because that's like I used to listen to – like I was flooded with podcasts. I listened to like 10 different libertarian podcasts. Like I have to narrow it down. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I kept listening to We Are Libertarians was because back in 2018, this was like the only network that gave like a fair look at the the Libsock caucus. And like I think you had Mike Shipley on a daily one time. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's like you guys were the only ones who were looking at them like, hey, like we disagree with you, but like – we still think like you you have some libertarian ideas and we're willing to talk to you and like debate that in a polite respectful way and uh i i don't know i just think that's super important because libertarianism is so much more than just you know anarcho-capitalism or uh you know the ron paul strain of the movement like those are very important parts of it but it's a huge like rainbow of a movement and i think it's wrong to just look at one segment of it and call that the call that like the be all end all of libertarianism right everybody else is not a real libertarian i hate you that know? phrase <laughs> yeah I, I, it's funny because you know i got the and cap thing flag behind me and everything yeah. but even then i'm not i'm not i'm just not into the labels it's a preference for me it's like saying i'm straight and i enjoy cake it's like well those those aren't even tied together you know what i mean it's like right. i i want to decrease the value of the state and also i enjoy a nice rice bowl from tokyo joe's it's like that, that that doesn't make it wh- why does that matter like is that so important so whenever we whenever we have these differences of opinion whether it's mike shipley or jack neeson or matt Keno or whoever it may be i think matt actually went and joined the democratic socialists and he's, yeah he's, he's kind of cool he's cool with some statism <laughs> now but but you know with with the people that aren't it's just like okay hey we're all cool with decreasing the the amount of government in our lives right yeah yes okay and then after that, it's like somebody being like, well, I really like coleslaw. And another guy's like, I'd rather have fries. And then just the whole <laughs> war is starting out because of that. And it's like, that had nothing to do with it. Like, that is no. nothing. Uh, it, it helps to paint a picture for some people to say, oh, after I've achieved a, a, a very minarchist or stateless society, how I will organize. And, and so I'm okay with you wanting to paint that picture for how you want to structure your community. It's yeah. helpful for me to know there are other capitalists because that's comfortable, right, for me to right. say that like, oh, okay, so after the state has fallen, I know I'll have a group of people that will respect my property, that believe in, you know, in labor and fruits of my labor and, and and i know how that works and i can't get voted out on my wage you know i just make you know i i'm, I'm entitled to sell it for what i want to sell it I, i'm comfortable with that yeah. but at the same time wouldn't you want libertarian socialists to be comfortable as well because then after they get their stateless they don't have to bug you anymore they go to their own <laughs> they go to their commune you know what i mean yeah. they go to their, and if it sucks then they leave you know like right <laughs> and so it's just it's like yeah i'm gonna after i achieve statelessness i'm gonna spend all my time eating ice cream versus somebody else who's gonna spend all their time eating flank steaks it's just <laughs> why fight why fight right. why not why not be unified and i should have thrown uh kenton in in on this well as a guy who is reasonable who you can talk with who you might disagree with maybe even philosophically disagree with but we make more sense as friends than enemies i know i've said this on the show before but i really stress that because it's just i i see these fights boiling over among people that make a lot of sense as friends that make no sense as enemies right (laughs) and me and kenton would make terrible enemies terrible (laughs) You know, I mean, we, I would, I would have to straw man him. He would have to straw man me. We'd have to commit fallacies all the time. I'd have to pretend that he argued for oppression. He'd have to pretend that I support the current system of government. It's just lunacy, right? Yeah. And so, and, and the sad thing is, I feel the same way about Patrick Smith, who unfortunately he unfriended me over this whole thing because I liked somebody, you know, Chris's post saying like, "Hey, dude, you need to chill out." You know what I mean? It's fine. Like, it's not. Unfortunately, that's his values, you know, is that's. And here's the thing is here's what it erased. We actually spoke. I don't want to get too much in his personal life, but but, um, you know, I had some family matters and and I we spoke and I checked in to make sure he was okay and we had a good friendship going. He gave me the heads up on a lot of technical stuff like we had it. We had a real friendship and it's worth burning down over this for him. 
And I'm just like, yeah. man, that makes no sense. Like, disagree uh, with the article. Do you even disagree with my policy? Honestly, my brother Woody, I don't hear from him unless he disagrees with me. But he always <laughs> does it respectfully, and we're still friends, and we're still brothers. And that's just that's just our relationship, right? Uh -huh. I know if I don't hear from him, I knocked it out of the park, right? <laughs> so that that's kind of my relationship with him. There you go. <laughs> you know, and 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 we have these great healthy debates over at the uh, Enemy of the State. I contribute over there occasionally. We differ on a lot of subjects, whether it's evolution versus creationism or egoism or you know voting uh we've yeah. had these disagreements but we are like hey but we're we make more sense as friends right like we still yeah. laugh at each other's memes we still add a lot of value to each other's lives so why why fight and i guess so so for me look i guess we're getting to the point where we need to do some closing statements here this journal will add value to your life if you're listening to it. It is great. If you don't think you like journals, this journal will probably make you like them again. This magazine is awesome. Again, it's wallreader.com. I have it on the bottom if you're looking at my uh, if you're looking at the video right now, I have a link to it on the bottom. You can also get it at Amazon. In fact, I should probably have you do all that stuff. But but uh, let me <laughs> let me wrap up with my my closing statements on is I just I am so proud to be a part of it. I really hope it continues to take off. Um, thankfully it's really taken off today. Thanks to our enemies who want yeah. to hate it, uh, are making it more popular than ever. And as a result, people that hate it are driven to the site and they're going to read an article written by me and find out they like me more. The influx of my friends list since yesterday has been a uh, been absurd right like <laughs> i have grown like 200 friends since yesterday who was like hey i just saw this on wall reader and i read your article and i was directed there by somebody who hates you now <laughs> and it's like well thank you people who hate me now you are useful idiots you know you've you've done a you've done a very good service for me and i thank you for uh, directing your traffic here but ryan uh give me both your last words i guess both about the book and then of course where they can where they can best help to make you uh, most popular, whether it be contributing or buying the magazine or whatever. Give us all the deets. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm super happy with how the first issue turned out. Uh, I'm excited to get started on uh, issue number two. And, um, of course, if you have any feedback at all, uh, feel free to send that to us. Um, yeah, like Hody said, you can find the magazine. Um, we have a website, just walreader.com. Uh, you can view a free PDF version of the magazine there. Um, or if you want, uh, we have it on Amazon Kindle. It's $3. Um, two of those dollars is just what Amazon charges. They get that. But then the, the other dollar I'm going to send right back to uh, We Are Libertarians' Patreon account. Um, so you can send Wall some money that way. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'm, I'm – in a strife with Amazon right now, but I'm trying to get it, uh, physical copies of that for sale on there as well, if you're interested in that. Um, and of course, if you uh, want to submit anything for a future issue, uh, you can get a hold of me or the Wall Reader Facebook page or We Are Libertarians. Uh, I'll publish any libertarian content, just no tankies and no fascists. But <laughs> other than that, I'm open. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, obviously, open invitation to talk about it again. I think we should probably at least try to do this quarterly when you yeah, release awesome. the when you release the you know the magazine, and so that way we can talk about what the latest episode and everything's about. Because uh, hey, if it's not controversial the day it gets released, it's gonna get there. I'm sure. <laughs> and so yeah. people want to be talking about it. But yeah, join in. Uh, contact Ryan if you if you got any questions, want to contribute. Uh, again, I will remember to forward you that email. <laughs> but uh, thanks so much for doing it, man. I really am. I'm so excited for it. I really hope it takes off. I, I am a million times better on the page than I am in speaking in Same the here. in the talking <laughs> department. And so yeah. for, I only have this job because nobody does read. So please read so that yeah, I can ple you can he please hear me. Stop talking. This nasally voice thing needs to go away from the radio forever. <laughs> So let's make Wall Reader popular and put me out of this job so I can do that job full time. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, oh, yeah. thanks again, Ryan. Uh, yeah. you, you have a good one, man. And everybody, uh, join in, support us on Patreon, buy the book, get online. And until then, keep fueling the fires of liberty. <laughs>